right guys, success. I've actually able to convert this uh, power steering rack, this is actually a C6 power steering rack, uh, into a manual rack. And you saw in the video there where I cut off the uh, tops or the inputs and the outputs and filled that in. Um, big advantage of that, as I kind of alluded to when I was first talking about it, was that the battery um, with those power uh, units in there or those lines in there would have actually had to live more on the passenger side of the car. And unfortunately, I've already got a lot of weight on the passenger side of the car, so I really didn't want to have that there. Uh, having, this, the, having those out of the way now allows me to move this battery to the center or even all the way right up to the actual edge of the actual, uh, basically the pinion gear for the rack. So that's really gonna allow me to weight balance the car. Yes, you do some weight balancing with the shocks, but actually having this weight itself uh, in the right position also is very helpful. Um, so this is basically gonna be called a success, a success. Now what I've gotta do though, is actually finish out the actual, um, the actual rest of the steering co uh, components here. So what I've done is I've ordered this intermediate shaft, the steering shaft off the C6, and that's gonna couple on to the uh, pinion there. And as you can see, I can kind of move it around, but it actually has a perfect alignment when it sits right on top of the frame rail I've already created. So this is actually gonna work out great. So we don't really have to do a whole lot of uh, stabilization there, or configurization. It's just gonna sit perfectly. I know you probably can't see from the camera there, but it's actually in a perfect alignment here. So. There's not gonna be any hard bends or hard kinks. But as I alluded to, I really don't wanna have a manual rack. I'm getting old and I need some help. So what I've done is ordered the Chevy View, or I'm sorry, Saturn View uh, power uh, unit. And this is actually just basically an electric power unit, doesn't use any hydraulic fluid. And that's gonna live right about here. So what I'm gonna have to do is, as always, do some fabrication. So I'm gonna cut this down so it's the right length. And then I'm gonna mount this unit here. It's obviously got some mounting positions. I'll have to make a custom bracket, but that'll live basically right on the edge of the firewall. And that's gonna allow me to continue to build off the uh, steering column. You know, I'll have a steering shaft, uh, a column really, and then the steering wheel. So that's gonna live up, work out perfectly. The other advantage of this now is originally, I had the, this is the power steering pump I originally chose for the project. And that actually lived right there. Well, with that removed, that created a nice space to be able to use a, a braking system. So this is a Willwood brake system. It's pretty common on any kind of aftermarket kind of hot rod setup. It's got a very small pumpkin for the uh, vacuum itself, but it works really well in this space. As you can see, it's you probably can't even tell, it's so low. So that's, a, that's gonna be awesome for this, this uh, build because what I really want, is a very, very aggressive line. So the front, the front uh, nose here, it's really gonna come right at top of these batteries and it's gonna slam, slam straight down. The, uh, the arch of the wheel is actually gonna be higher than the actual center part here. And by having these components this low, it's gonna be able to allow me to do what I wanna do from a design perspective. So now that I've kinda got this kinda laid out and every, all the major components are here, I do need to get a vacuum pump for this. Um, it will make a little bit of noise, but the vacuum pump has a pressure switch and the only time that the pressure switch, or the only time the vacuum pump's gonna go on is actually when it actually needs that vacuum. So I don't think it's gonna be really obnoxious or even noisy. Uh, I will put a little bit of baffle on it too, probably face it towards the ground. So I don't think you're gonna hear the pump at all. So I'm pretty pleased with that. But uh, what I really wanna do is, now that I've got this kind of worked out, I really wanna get that tester motor to actually spin. So we're, my goal is, probably by the end of this episode, to be able to show that Tesla motor actually rotating. We won't have drive shafts hooked up to it yet, but just to you know, get us kind of going in the right direction, get the spin motor spinning. So there's a number of things we gotta do in the back of the car to kind of make that happen. So let me go, go ahead and jump to the back of the car and we'll go through what needs to kind of happen next. All right, so here we are at the back of the car. Uh, what you see on the two tires are actually the chargers themselves. I'm actually doing some bit of a modification of the chargers, nothing major. Um, these can actually run in what's known as a master and slave component. To do that, you kind of do some wiring on the inside of them. Um, if anybody's interested, I can go ahead and give me a link. But uh, again, these are Chevy Volt chargers. Each one is about 3.3 uh, kilowatts of power. So I got a total of about 6.6 .6 kilowatts to be able to charge these batteries. So as you can see here, these are my, this is my one battery pack here. So what we're looking at right here is gonna equate to about 370 volts. 
The other is additional 370 volts that goes down the tunnel and in the very front of the car. So what I want to do is, is actually, I'm not going to worry about getting all of the batteries connected because they run in parallel. So there's a 370 here and a 370 here and they kind of merge together. And that gives us the, uh, the voltage to actually drive the uh, motor here. So what I want to do now is go ahead and get these, get these actually properly mounted. So what I've done is I've gone in here and I've actually modified this little frame here. So these are also going to sit incredibly low. Um, what I want to do though is I don't want to have these wires on the bottom of the car, underneath the car. So I'm afraid those will get ripped out. So what I'm doing is actually drilling on the side here and rewriting some of the cabling. Uh, this is actually the, the 12 volt system as well as the CAN bus, um, as well as the actual uh, on and off switch. So I got to rewrite those to the actual side component and get that one mounted. I've actually done that already on the first charger here. It's a little hard to see, but everything now is coming out the side versus the bottom and I filled the bottom in with some, uh, with some JV weld epoxy. The other thing I've got to take care of is fin finishing the actual cooling. When they're charging, these things get incredibly hot. So you can see here, what I'm gonna do is actually, the cooling system is gonna be for the, the, the uh, chargers, as well as the motor, because both systems aren't going to be active simultaneously. This will only be active when the car is actually plugged into a 220 source and that is generating heat. And the only time that this is going to generate heat is actually when we're driving. So it makes sense to go ahead and have these be basically a, a united system. So what I'm doing there is actually I've got this, again, nice Chevy Bolt product here, this Bolt pump, and that's going to go right here. I've got an elbow on order that's going to go into the actual Tesla motor itself. That'll pump cool up to that side. I've actually got to make a custom piece there. The normal uh, Tesla one is actually long and it comes straight out. It'll hit my frame rail. So I'm gonna actually have to fabricate and get one 3D printed that's gonna come at the right angle. Then that's gonna travel basically to one pump, I'm sorry, to one charger, come across here to the second charger. The radiator system is either gonna live here or it's gonna live right about, there's gonna, it could be two, one here and one there or I might run a radiator across the back. Haven't really decided that yet. And obviously we got a, a reservoir here system as well. So that's also off the bolt. And it actually worked out really nice because it sits perfectly in the frame rail. So uh, the only other component that I need to get into this car then to the electrical is gonna be this. This is, uh, I've actually got all the innards tore out of it, but this is the DC to DC converter. On the Chevy Bolt, it's actually an air-cooled system. And I went ahead and had this welded on here, and now it's a water-cooled system. So this also, it's gonna live in here somewhere. I gotta kind of work through that. But um, first things first, I wanna get these chargers, make sure that they are working correctly. To do that, they have to be obviously hooked up to a, a charging system, and they have to actually get a CAN bus signal. And to do the CAN bus signal right now, I'm using this uh, Thunderstruck Motorsports, and what this really does is basically just tricks the uh, charger to turn it on. Since cam signal says, hey, please turn on now. So, um, and then we'll go ahead and get these batteries fully charged. They're like at 350, 360 right now. I'll get them up to the 370. Uh, so let me go ahead and get started and get this kind of set up and uh, do a little time lapse and see if you kind of follow along.
manipulation of the systems, trying to get everything worked out as uh, unfortunately the internet lied. So it took me a little bit longer to actually figure out the wiring. Talk about that here in just a second. But basically, let's kind of go through the process now. So what we've got here is a handy dandy charging station. And this is our 240, uh, sorry, 220 coming in from the street. That runs into our plug here. And when we plug this in, what that does is it talks to the Thunderstruck, uh, it's called a v EVCC. And that basically is a system that mimics the original Chevy Volt ECU, which basically tells the charger to turn on. As you can see in the screen here, it actually pops up and we can see that the uh, charger's actually turned itself on and it is currently trying to charge the battery at 372 volts. Uh, the battery is actually not connected, but um, it, that's actually what the charger is trying to do. When I unplug it, it goes into a steady state and drops the charger, uh, I'm sorry, drops the EVC and turns it off. So there's almost no power consumption right now when the uh, system's sitting idle like this. So let's go ahead and look at the uh, look at the actual charger itself and I can tell you what I had it end up doing to uh, change some of those wires around. All right, so we've got the second charger still up here on the workbench. The first charger is obviously mounted and kind of go through what I did to the first charger uh, that I've already started doing on the second charger here. So the first thing is the wiring. The input wiring is normally across the bottom. Uh, for us, that's not really the greatest option because I was afraid as the car went over something, the car, as, you, as I said, only sits four inches off the ground. So the wiring hanging right down there could actually, you know, any branch or something could just come up and rip out those wires and obviously that would be bad. Uh, so what I've done is actually tapped the case and rewired it. And in the process, there's a whole bunch of other wires in here. You can see right here, these are the CAN bus wires and there were some power wires and some more CAN bus wires. I went through and basically eliminated all of the redundancy. I'm not, I don't have a redundant system in the first place, so I just went with the very basics. Uh, and so I've got the first wire here on pin three, and that was where the problem was. On the internet, it said it was pin one. However, it's pin three. So that basically turns the, um, turns the charger on and off. Uh, then you've got the CAN bus on, these, uh, on the second connector here, and then your power leads. So basically, you got just a total of uh, five wires there to make the whole charger work. And what I'm gonna do here is I've just gotta put some uh, JB Weld on these wires to hold them in place. I've already JB Welded the bottom, so letting that cure up. And then I'll put this car, or put this charger in the car and we'll be set with our two chargers and have the total of 6.6 .6 kilowatts of power. Hooray. So now that we've got the charging all figured out, what I've gotta work on next is actually getting the pump working and getting the DC to DC converter working. So the pump, I don't remember if I said this or not, but this is actually a pulse, watch, pulse module uh, pump. So what that means is I just can't apply 12 volts to it. I actually have to send it a proper signal to actually get the pump to spin at different frequencies, faster, slower, that type of thing. So to do that, I'm gonna actually have to wire up uh, an ECU, which I've got and kind of kind of have to keep that in wraps just yet, but because that's kind of more of the uh, so, secret sauce. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that without showing you guys, but we'll get to that. And finally, I've got to go through and actually put the DC to DC converter back together again. So the DC to DC converter by default is actually air cooled. I think I might have said that once before. So this has actually now been welded on so I can actually make it a water cooled unit. And I've actually positioned it right back here. And it fits just like it looks like a factory setup here. So what we've got now is uh, we've got our charging, we've got our alternator on, for uh, lack of a better term. Actually, it's a DC DC converter, but an alternator in a normal car or an uh, ice car, whatever you want to call it. We've got a reservoir tank. So really, what's left is I've got to design and print a little adapter here because the factory one goes straight out. I need mine to come at a 90 degree angle. That allow me to finish up the uh, cooling. Once the cooling's done, and oh, yes, I don't know, we've got to actually wire in the BMS. So, as you can see, all these, uh, hold on a second. as you can see, all these batteries have these orange connectors on them. So these orange connectors were originally set up to go to the factory BMS system. 
Um, I can't use the factory BMS system. It actually is a different kind of CAN bus and it's just not gonna work out, um, fortunately for me. So I do have a, a, another from Thunderstruck Motors, another uh, BMS system that I'm gonna basically be taking, stripping all these down and then attaching it to their BMS system, which will obviously work with their charger system so that should work out nicely for us anyway. Uh, I'm not gonna record that. It's really kind of a boring process, but when you see this again, what you're gonna see is a bunch of uh, white wires going all across these batteries. I'll still have these orange connectors, but uh, they'll actually be connected up to something. So, like I said, we'll get that BMS set up and we'll get our cooling set up and then we will be able to run a full charge and then get this motor spinning. So that's what we're gonna do in the next episode. So uh, yeah, I think this is actually a good stopping point. Um, and if you uh, found this interesting, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching.